Philippa, thank you so much for joining me today. You know, you are a legend. And I don't use that like, you know, oh, you touched my soul. That is a pretty amazing thing to hear from you because to me, you're a legend, so thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. But you know, for, for loads of people who, who may not know your music and mm -hmm. who may not know you, you know, who is Philippa Hanna? Still figuring that out, Noel, as we all are. But yeah, I'm a Northern singer-songwriter born in Barnsley, mm. raised on country music and soul music and became a Christian in 2004 and picked up the guitar and just started writing my journey. Wow. So tell me something, like a little detail. So when did you kind of know that, um, was there something that happened that you kind of went, well, I'm, I'm really good at this and, and, and people are listening or, you know, was there some moment? It's really hard to pinpoint where it started because it really was from childhood. My dad is an entertainer, grew up watching him on stage in social clubs, holiday parks. Imagine that entertainer that's a bit yeah. like a singing Irish Michael McIntyre. <laughs> that's my dad. Did he practice at home, I suppose? Practice at home a lot? I, he was too busy doing it out there, you know. Wow, he was, he was literally practice. constantly out on the road and, and things. And, and this whole thing about touring, you know, you talked about your dad touring the northern mm -hmm. clubs and yep. doing that stuff that seems to be in your blood because you know I, I, i've known about you touring with some some amazing groups you had a uh, little mix mm -hmm. and then you had say hello lionel <laughs> richie well and and and, and most recently I, I saw you with the kingdom choir my friends what's it like going on tour philippa Wow, um, I love being on tour. I think it's in my blood. I like mm. traveling, I like meeting people, and there's nothing quite like getting in front of a crowd and connecting with strangers, and you feel like friends within just a few songs, so it's incredible. And the Kingdom Choir tour, I have to say, was my favorite so far. Man, I saw you at incredible. Royal Albert Hall, and you floored me, and the people in my box, I was in a box, in a box. Posh. Hello. Posh. They were so blown away by you. I was like, whoa, they were talking. I was like, she's my friend, she's my friend. Aww. But you know, one of the things about touring is that mm -hmm. most people, you know, I, I said it before in many interviews, I've said they see the fruit, but they don't know the route. And we know that Ooh, yeah. we can get to an event at 12 o'clock and, and not on, be on till nine o'clock. What are some of the things that you do when you're on tour to just keep your, keep your mind focused, um, you know, what do you do? Well, I take my husband with me, so that's nice. So we get to spend time together. But we spend a lot of time just chatting, practicing sometimes. We rehearse, write things. Often I'll use the, that time to do something on social media, write a post or try and connect with people. I love to connect with people on social media, really passionate about that. And one of the great things about you is that anybody who follows you, so you've got to go and follow Philippa Hanna, people, you've got to follow her, you know, online, Facebook and all that stuff. And, and one of the things that people see when you share your heart, you actually mm. walk with your heart on your sleeve, you know, a bit like me. Mm -hmm. And when I'm really down, I, I feel it. And one of the things that um, I, always, I always say to people, you know, sometimes I get those moments where it's like a deer in headlights mm -hmm. and I have this creative block. Uh, do you have those? I do. And actually, I had a really, really good chat with my friend Tony Wood in Nashville about it. He's a great songwriter. He's had over 60 number one hits. Wow. And um, he said, good writers write when they're inspired. Great writers write until they're inspired. And that really stuck with me. It's wow. like, just keep moving. It doesn't have to be genius every day, if ever. <laughs> you know, I just produce, create, just do and your best. Actually, it just comes out of you a bit like, you know, um, I've, I've written with you and, well, it just flows. And I'm like, whoa, she's just like a torrent, you know, it's like, whoa. And I think that's so, that's so good, you know. And one of the other things as well that's really passionate in your heart is, mm. um, you know, about mental health and how, mm -hmm. and how that affects creatives. And, you know, mm. I've been vocal about it and been worried about it, even my own. Um, what, does, what does that actually mean to you, Philippa, in terms of the journey and the story, mm -hmm. you know? I first realized that mental health was going to be a journey, a bumpy journey for me when I was about 13. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to struggle with anxiety and depression. Didn't have the language for it back then, didn't really know what was wrong, but just knew that the idea of school just made me feel absolutely sick to my stomach and I just, I just couldn't face normal things. And since then, it's been a little bit like that's on and off throughout my life. So thankful for my faith because I'm always able to look at Jesus and think, God has a plan to prosper and not to harm me. Yeah, absolutely. And he's going to bring me through this, you yes. know? And he, he has a plan which involve, which can use this. He can take what I've been through and help me to sort of use that as material, as inspiration. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, another creative way of getting through that block is just to tell the truth. Just speak what's going on in your life. 
I think that's what makes for the best worship songs too. And, and that's the most profound thing about you is that you do, you do, you share your, your life socially to so many people we can see the days and the mapping of days mm -hmm. the other thing we got some things in common uh, you know some things in common that we we are both compassion ambassadors yeah and it's really dear to us. what what does what does it mean to you to be a compassion ambassador my first ever christian concert was in stoke-on-trent and i walked up to a little stand i was drawn in made friends with the guy there a guy called matt i'm still friends with now and I first heard about the work of compassion as a brand new Christian. I wanted to do something more than just sing about my faith yeah. and talk about my faith. You know that. I wanted to put my faith where my mouth was, if you like, and, and do something to help a child in poverty. Um, and, you know, we still don't have our own kids, Joel and I, yet. Um, and so it's so important that we sow into a life. So we love compassion because they work with the poorest of the poor across the world. Right. They are child focused, Christ centered, and they're based in church. Absolutely. Church based, which is so important. So I think they're an extremely resourceful organization. They don't yeah. waste anything. They work with local people to bring the best out in the lives of those local children. So I'm super passionate about Like you, passion. I am. And you yeah. know, we, we, my heart has been changed because, mm. you know, traveling to some of the projects and and hearing and seeing and experiencing for myself. So, you know, Philippa, can you share a story that has touched you the most? I don't think I'll ever forget the first time I met a mother who had lost children to curable things. So um, we were on this trip to Haiti with compassion. And I'd, to be honest, I was struggling with the culture shock of just being in this really hot country all of a sudden, and mm. it's noisy, I've had no sleep, I wasn't feeling very well. We go to this project and this beautiful young mother stands up and starts to testify about compassion and wow. to thank God for what compassion has done. And she tells us that she'd buried five children. She'd lost wow. five children. Just to things like a bad stomach or malaria, things that could easily have been dealt with. And um, I just fell apart because I suddenly realized, wow, my problems just shrunk, you know? Yeah. Everything I thought was an issue in my life just like just went like that. And I just thought that could be my child. That could be my sister's child, you know? Mm. That could be a child next door. Why why do I feel so removed from this? Yeah. And um, that was kind of when I decided I really wanted to work with Compassion. She had her little boy beside her who'd been through the program, was going to school, was dressed lovely, ready for his classes, and had had his vaccinations, was just healthy and well at what every child deserves. Mm. And you know, one, one of the things is that, um, you know, for me, obviously, uh, recognizing that, you know, I, I recognize there's something very different about the Compassion Projects mm -hmm. in, in context to the wider area. So, you know, tell us about the impact one child being helped and how it impacts loads of other children. Oh, it completely changes the whole community. So, you know, sponsorship, it sort of spreads out. It spreads through the family. It blesses the family. Compassion do, does a lot of things you don't see. So they do a lot of complementary things around the projects that the ch specific children need in that area. And you can see the impact of child sponsorship through the family, through the community, all the way out through the church. And how it empowers. Sometimes one child being sponsored empowers a whole family. And one of the things that I really love about the wider thing is that they do it through the church in mm -hmm. the community. Yeah. Which, you know, which really falls in line with, you know, my thoughts about, you know, a, a charity that works with local churches to bring change to whole areas. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think that's great. So it, it leads me to, there's this, there's this song that I, that, that I wrote and I truly was inspired by, you know, uh, one of my trips to Uganda. And, and it really was about, the theme of the song is called Outrageous Love. And why did I use the word outrageous? Because loads of people ring me, my gosh, that, that song is a <laughs> bit, out, outrageous love don't go together. And I began to really think, what kind of God rescues, rescues people that our humanity sometimes says doesn't deserve it? It's got to be a God that's so outrageously in love with us that he will send his son. So let's, let's worship with that song right now. I remember the night. It was a night when I woke up and found my dad dead. My mom couldn't respond. 
to me. I decided to go outside, calling the neighbors for help. In August 2001, I lost both my dad and my mom. The life wasn't easy. I remember the days when we sleep without food, we didn't eat, we didn't have clothes. We lived with my aunt, me and my young sister. My community is, it's a crime community where there's a lot of gangs and people neglect their family. The children are roaming around, they don't care about them. My name is Vivian Adam. I'm born again Christian. I'm Compassion alumni. Currently, I'm working at Compassion International Tanzania as administrative assistant. I was registered in Compassion program by the Church of Ellen Pentecostal Student Center. So I used to play netball. Also, I like the food, Bible scriptures, the company to have the kids around and playing, just singing the choir. I was a choir singer. If I wasn't in the program, I wouldn't be here where I am today. I didn't have someone who was there to follow up on me, to give me hope. The death of my life was, of, of my parent was the end of my life. But the program was there to help me. My sponsor trusted me, believed in me. She used to address me as her first firstborn. So that gave me the sense of belonging, maybe somewhere. I have a family, I have someone who loves me, I have someone who look to me and, and see that I'm valued, I'm worthy. I really thank the Compassion Program for the help and support that they gave me. Because through that, um, this person you're talking to right now, I understand myself, I know what I want to do, I know the dreams that I have and I know how to go about them. Now I'm still attending the church. I'm a youth leader and I like to work with youth, get to sit and talk. I can be with them, I can hug them, I can advise them on in everything. Sponsoring a child through Compassion is worth the investment. I appreciate the sponsoring that they're doing through Compassion. I, I appreciate the hard work they're doing, the effort, the time. So through the, the, this little thing they're doing for these little ones, may God bless them so much. Wow, you know, uh, outrageous love. That's, that's the kind of love that God pours out. For God so loved us that he gave his son to everyone, not just us in the West, but people all around this world. So, you know, one of the things that you, you had a special trip mm -hmm. to uh, Ecuador. What happened in Ecuador? Wow, I never thought I would get the chance to do this, but the child I sponsored on that very first day I mentioned in that very first Christian concert, yeah. his name was Carlos. He was five years old at the time from Ecuador. And I sponsored on a whim, you know, it was just like, I'll just see if I can make this work. I was actually not earning very much at the time. and. But for me, it was a step of faith. Yeah. And God, thank God, by his grace, I've been able to sponsor him this whole time, probably 14 years. And so I got a chance to meet Carlos. I was so nervous to meet him because, you know, you've been writing to somebody yeah. all that time. You get to know each other via letters and pictures. And as soon as I saw him, I felt completely apart because he was just like a family member. I just felt like... He was my little brother or my nephew or mm. he felt like a part of me. Wow, because you've been just pouring into his life. So what, yeah. what were you thinking and feeling before you met him? You know, that moment that like, I'm going into micro. Yeah. You know, was there an anxiousness kind of thing? Yeah, I was really worried it was going to be awkward because we don't necessarily speak the same language. And, you know, I thought we've never met and I didn't want him to feel pressure to be like, oh, you're my sponsor's here. But we on us, I felt like I was embracing a brother. There was no awkwardness. I, and I, I'd never cry, never yeah. in those situations. And I was, I was a mess. That is so incredible. Yeah. I hope one day I get to meet my sponsored child. So, you know, Ecuador mm -hmm. meeting your sponsored child. Wow. You know, um, what, you know, what did you learn about Compassion's programs and how they impact children like Carlos? For Carlos, the problem he faces is many of his friends, I spoke to his mum about this, many of his friends and peers didn't finish school. They ended up in prison. They ended up in, involved in gang culture, a lot of crime in his area. It's very dangerous. 
and I got to watch him graduate. You know, I got to watch him graduate, wow. cap and gown. That's so... I was like, if you can do it, you know, this is this is the thing. It's He should have that chance in life. He should be yes. able to get that education and that care to be the great young man that he is. You know, why do you think, you know, why do you think sponsorship is so important? Oh, even now, <laughs> more than ever, you know, why do you think sponsorship is? For me, it has expanded my faith and my understanding of what it is to be a Christian. You spoke, as Christians, we're supposed to come alongside yeah. our brothers and sisters. This is not about us being rescuers from the West. This is about coming alongside our brothers and sisters in Christ, making sure they have a shot in life, making sure they get to know Jesus because that's another big component because it's church-based. Absolutely. Children get to know Jesus, the love of God, and that no matter what their start is in life, the sky is the limit. Mm. You know, I want that for my own kids. I want it for my nieces and nephews, yeah. and I, I think every child deserves that. So, you know, here I am. You, you said the word opportunity earlier, yeah, and I so think that's the key word. It's yeah. not about us being saviors. It's about us taking the opportunity to have even what little we have in our hands and make sure that that is used for the kingdom, sewn into a person. Yeah. Sorry to waffle, but... No, um, no, it's, it's very important because it's passionate. Yeah. You know, I, I'm passionate about it, you know, that that the little that I I do can, can help, you know, um, you know, visiting Kenya and we went to, you know, some of the slum areas in Kenya mm. and I was deeply, deeply moved. You know, there was a, there was a hush that came over my spirit mm -hmm. because here I was I looking at, at young people who without opportunity mm -hmm. and, and this thing you said about the word of God, because we know that the Bible says this train a child in the way it should go. So when it's old, it won't depart and actually putting the word of God in, in a child actually gives it an amazing opportunity for salvation, but we have to come alongside so the word is put, the word is on good soil. You know, one of the things that we've been facing this, this global mm -hmm. pandemic, COVID-19 has devastated economy, has devastated so many things, you know. How has COVID-19 affected those countries that compassion work in? Well, just like it's affected us here, it's massively affected the parents, the families, the caregivers and their ability to earn money for the family. So the Compassion Church partners have done such an amazing job of yeah. coming in with all those essential things, critically needed things like food, water, medicines, other essentials, clothing, you know, just the basic things that, that kids and families need. So but they've really provided like a completely amazing service, a really needed service. So Philippi, where can we hear about the work of Compassion? Really easy, just jump onto compassionuk.org lots of children waiting for sponsors there and if you sponsor today what that does is it gives them access to the immediate help and support they wow. need yeah so but good. also the long-standing support of compassion with that communication and that relationship so good now let's take a look at this video we have already seen the situation of our beneficiaries before this crisis and when this crisis comes, we really have seen this great need to provide, to help by giving this uh, relief distribution. The child support funds are being used. Then the funds allotted for these are used instead to provide relief goods for children and their family members. And these relief goods cover the basic necessities that they need We have seen the excitement of the children and I think one thing that I am so thankful is that when they recognize that those blessings that they receive comes from the Lord and that the Lord answered their prayers and that their needs were provided. So they were so glad, so glad. I just can't imagine. I'm proud of the church. The name of Jesus Christ has been lifted up. I really thank the Lord for this partnership that we were able to respond. Christ is our provider, and when we fear, we can always put our trust in Him. Wow. Absolutely amazing. So good. Wow. My heart is, is mm -hmm. just... We bless the staff 
and the, the guys working, if you've ever been to the office, we just bless them mm -hmm. even in this moment for all the work that they do. And, you know, sometimes it, it might be a really difficult, you know, shifting papers and different things like that. But every paper they shift is attached to a name of a young person around this world. And, and what we're doing is we're bringing young people out of poverty, giving them an opportunity to be the best. And I, I want to encourage people that, you know, even in the season that those that are, are supporting, just keep supporting. Do you know, the little that you, the little that you do to support what's going on is, 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 a, is a real blessing. You know, mm -hmm. you wrote an amazing song. You know, I love, I love this, this theme, Freedom. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm into this freedom thing. Yeah, it's, you've got the freedom you know thing I mean? going on. Um, I'm waiting for you to do the <laughs> twist, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, but this song really is, is about freedom found me and, and, and what Compassion do. Uh, when, 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 we, when we partner with a, an organisation like Compassion is that the young people find a freedom to live, Absolutely. to hope, yeah. to to uh, to dream for more than this, simply because we walk alongside them. Why did you write that song anyway? I wrote the song actually about my coming to Jesus moment because I'd, I'd looked for freedom in a lot of unhealthy places, as a lot mm. of young people do, you know, thinking that if my dreams came true, if I had the right man, if I had this, that, I'd feel free but it only came when Jesus came into my life. So yeah. true freedom found me. And again, I think that's that's the whole message of, of compassion is that freedom is, we're going after mm -hmm. those young people to come alongside them. And mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're pursuing it. We're pursuing their opportunities and pursuing their freedom. And, and you know, one of the things, it's, it's on a new album. Yeah. And I'm so excited about the album, you know, because we're, 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 we're stable mates in, in terms of, you know, the music that, that's put out there and and uh, we we want to hear uh, you know so many more of the songs but going to this freedom song what did you or what do you hope people can get from the song i really hope that they're reminded if they're believers they're reminded of the freedom they have in jesus yeah. even in lockdown even in troubles and chaos and for anybody who's Preach, maybe girl. yeah come on <laughs> and then maybe if they don't know jesus that that's there it's waiting for them that freedom is waiting for them Philippa, thank you for being with us today. You know, your heart is so huge uh, for the things of God and God's put so many amazing things in your hands, you know, sharing about the incredible work of compassion. Um, you know, if people would like to know more information, please visit the website on your screen right now. And you know what, Philippa, why don't you just go and get yourself ready to okay. bring us uh, this song, uh, Freedom Found Me. You know, uh, we want to see you next week because next week is going to be an amazing show. I don't know how we're going to follow that, but I'll tell you what, on Vox Collective, where we release the sound of the prophetic voice, we are so excited that you will join us next week. So see you there.